Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is on using the Pathfinder in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, the Pathfinder is a tool palette. If you don't see yours open, you can just choose Window, Pathfinder. And I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through the three that I think are the most common and that I use the most often. So the first is Unite. And what the Unite option does, it's the upper left one here, is it allows you to merge slash unite overlapping shapes. So for example, I've got this flower drawn and you can see it's been drawn with a variety of ovals and circles to create the flower shape. So I could just group this and use this as a flower shape. But I'm going to prefer my artwork to be a little bit more tidy and organized and what I want to do is I'm going to merge this into one shape so that it creates just one single path around the outside edge. Um, for example, because if I wanted to add a stroke to this I get an outline around every single one. That's not what I want. So if I click on Unite, it turns all of those overlapping shapes into one shape based on where the edges of the artwork lie. So now we've got one nice tidy flower and if I apply a stroke, it gives me what I want. It strokes just the outer edges. Okay, so that's the example of the Unite. It allows you to merge overlapping shapes into one single shape. The next example is the divide. So this example here I've done with two circles. So I've drawn two circles here because what I ultimately want to do is create a moon shape. So instead of trying to manually draw a moon shape with a pen tool um, or something to that extent, I can really quickly do it using divide and the path on the pathfinder. So this larger circle's on top, and I've got a smaller circle on the bottom. In this instance, it doesn't really matter which order we put them in, um, in terms of their stacking. So I choose that, and the divide is in the bottom left corner. So it's, see, kind of the icon here kind of gives you a good little preview. It's showing you if you had two squares overlapping, it's going to break apart in the center to give you one smaller square and then two essential like L's. So I'm going to click on that. Now, right away, it doesn't really look like much happened. And if I click on it with my selection tool, the black arrow, I still don't really feel like much happened. Um, when you divide something, all the little shapes and pieces and parts that have been divided are automatically grouped. So we're just going to ungroup that object, ungroup. And now you can see what it's done is it's divided those overlapping shapes anywhere there was lines going over each other into larger shapes. So now I actually have two moons. I could decide which one worked best. You know, perhaps I'm creating a repeating pattern with shapes like this. So that's a really handy one, divide. It's kind of the opposite of the unite. Instead of merging overlapping shapes, it divides them and creates individual shapes where the lines cross over each other. The last one I want to show you is exclude. So exclude's handy for creating shapes that essentially you want to have cutouts in the middle of them. Um, and ultimately these are called compound paths. When you have one path and then another path that's actually still part of that shape that creates negative space inside. So the example I want to show you is first with the button. So right now I've got my button drawn where I've got these four white circles creating what are actually the buttonholes. Now if I was on a white garment that would look fine. But if I have this on top of a turquoise garment, it's not a very accurate representation. So some people might just take these and change the fill color to be turquoise, but then that's not reality. In reality, the buttonholes would be cut out of the button. And if you change the shirt to be pink from turquoise, then you also have to change the buttonholes. So it's best to create the button accurately how it is in real life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my buttonholes as well as my button. Now, when you're excluding whatever shapes are on top is what color is going to be inherited. So that's fine. Just note that when we do this, the color, the button's going to change to color white because the shapes that are on top, the buttonholes are white. If you didn't want this to happen, you could just change those to green or we can do it and then change it back to green at the end. It doesn't really matter. So what this does is going to exclude the shapes that are on top from the bottom shape. So this is the upper right option on your Pathfinder, exclude click on that and now like I told you it was going to change so we could just come over here to our swatches and change it back to green that's fine but now this is one compound path it's not one circle with four smaller circles just sitting on top of it it's not one circle with four smaller circles all grouped into an object it's actually one compound path where the outer circle is a path and the inner circles are part of that same shape 
um, creating a negative space on the inside. And you can see that right here. You can actually see through. So that's the most accurate way to create your button. And so the other example that's pretty handy is with a zipper pull. So I've got this zipper pull. I'm actually going to change the circle here from white to be gray so that when I change, when I use the exclude, everything stays gray. So I'll click on that. Now you can see it's excluded that shape and has created a compound path again with a zipper pull that's accurately rep represented. So from here, we can line up all the pieces and parts of our zipper pull and we've got a nice really accurate zipper pull that will show the negative space that you would see in reality on a zipper pull. So those are the three basics of the Pathfinder. Unite to merge overlapping shapes into one. Divide to break overlapping shapes into smaller shapes that are made up by where the overlapping lines cross. And the exclude, which actually cuts paths out of shapes where there are overlapping paths. So if you want to play around with the others, what I suggest you do is you just create a bunch of shapes, overlapping shapes on your artboard, and kind of click through and see what they do. Um, that's what I found to be the best way. But uh, I think in the end you'll find a couple that you use regularly, and, and some of them are just not really relevant for your purposes. So thanks for watching. I hope that helped you guys understand Pathfinder a little bit better. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.